this is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to discuss how to treat your dog's anterior cruciate ligament injury at home without surgery. So what do you do for a dog that has ruptured his anterior cruciate ligament? I'm assuming for this section of the video, you've had your dog diagnosed. So if you've got a dog who's got sudden lameness, he's very painful on his rear, one of his right or left rear legs, have him examined by your veterinarian. You don't necessarily need to have any other diagnostic tests done. The basic thing is having a veterinary exam, having someone with skill palpate that knee, give you a sense of, see if there is a drawer sign. You can refer back to the first part of the video. If there's a positive drawer sign or there's some other clinical signs as far as positive tibial compression tests, perhaps palpating a meniscal clip, then likely your dog has an ACL injury, then you should be watching this section of the video. But first I want you to have a clear diagnosis. So first, do you always need to have surgery? Obviously no you don't. Majority of clients are financially not in a position to immediately have surgery on their dogs who have ACL injuries. The issue then becomes what is best, what is the best advice, what do you do? I mean, while I was in veterinary practice, I did a number of ACL surgeries, and especially while in practice, I, I was of the opinion that when there was a complete rupture, you're looking at a medium and large breed dog that's fairly active, surgery is ideal. And I think in many cases, when you've got an experienced surgeon and you've got a pretty large active dog, surgery can be very beneficial. But that being said, it isn't always necessary, and there are increasingly a number of options. Another big point I want to make about cruciate injuries in dogs is that many dogs, if they injure one leg, they'll go on to injure the other leg, rupture its anterior cruciate ligament as well. Primarily that's because once they injure the one leg, they'll be strongly favoring that second leg, putting undue forces on it. And in some cases, up to 50% of dogs will at some point then injure that second leg. So the big point is one that if you're going to treat your dog conservatively, that really is why you need to strongly restrict their activity, because if you don't, they have a high chance of injuring that second leg. Two, that would be the reason why you should then consider looking at something like a brace. If you're not able to really restrict your dog, in some way you need to support the injured leg so your dog can then start to put some weight on it so they won't then go ahead and blow the second cruciate on the other leg. And lastly, too, if you've gone ahead and done some type of surgery with your dog, your dog's had surgery, it's the importance of gradually having that leg heal, introducing exercise to them so they can build up that strength again in the leg that's had surgery, but at the same point so they can weight bear on the surgical leg and not put undue stress on that second leg and injure it as well. First thing you need to do, I'm going to go over a number of different options. I'm going to talk about supplements, I'm going to talk about acupressure, I'm going to talk about massage. But the first sort of basic principle of understanding healing your dog's ACL injury at home, especially without surgery, is that there needs to be adequate time that the knee itself can stabilize on its own without further injury itself. So as we talked about earlier, and if you haven't watched the first part of the video, it's the last week's video, that long term your dog needs to form this thing called this scar tissue or, or buttress, especially the medial buttress. They get all this scar tissue form in the inside and also the outside of the knee that keeps that knee stable. So it's preventing that drawer sign where I'm grabbing the femur and moving the tibia cranial to that or forward. It's stopping that because of all that scar tissue. So we need that to be stable so then your dog can run around and act normally. And as you can imagine, you know, if your knee is unstable, where the tibia is always moving forward in relation to the femur, it's very painful. So one, we need that stability. So if we're not able to get that with surgery, then the next thing is we need adequate rest and time for this scar tissue to build up and happen. So what that means, our first option is we're not going to do anything in particular as far as I'm going to be discussing braces, etc. But it means like strict rest for eight weeks. So that means where your dog if they're not supervised and they're not on a leash, they're, they've got to be in a kennel. They have to be at the point where they can put no undue force on that knee. That means they can't jump up, they can't run, they can't chase a ball, they can't be going for anything more than a short walk outside to go to the bathroom, then back inside where they can be monitored, be restricted, they can be on a leash with you in the house. You can't have the chance where they're going to get up and 
soon as the doorbell rings and run to the door and slip on the stairs, that's all it would take. So first it means a fairly big commitment from you, the pet owner, that you're willing to really restrict your dog for that full eight weeks. I have had clients who do that and their dogs have been able to heal. And it doesn't just happen in eight weeks, it's a progressive period of time. But eight weeks is the minimum period of time we're going to get substantial scar tissue building up. And then as the time progresses, you get more scar tissue, more stability. Typically, somewhere between four to six months is where you actually have this knee back to its full strength. Canine knee braces. The first one I want to show you is from OrthoDog. It's at orthodog.com. They make a number of different mobility braces for dogs, but this one in particular is their cruciate care knee brace. These are the specific instructions for installing it. One, how you're fitting the harness around the neck. Two, inserting the front leg through the shoulder opening, and then bringing the, the strap around behind the armpits. They also have specifics for how to fit that brace properly. First, the butterfly back brace, the anchor leg brace, along with the cruciate knee brace, and then the adjustments that you can make accordingly. The second brace I want to show you is from A-Track. It's called, the, the website is woundwear.com. They make the A-Track Dynamic Brace. Uh, this one in particular is a patent pending brace. Uh, they claim it's the first brace of its kind introduced for dogs. A-Track stands for Anti-Transitional Cruciate Brace. The brace prevents anterior movement of the tibia, that's that lower bone below the femur, um, in relation to the femur. The, this brace infers that the brace is not static in its design and it functions in a manner which allows for a select range of motion of the knee joint against resistance. The brace therefore promotes rehabilitation of the limb and the joint. Um, a number of different claims that it's designed for rehabilitation and post-op protection after surgery or injuries and that it prevents the movement of the tibia in relation to the femur, that it promotes this obviously rehabilitation um, of any type of ACL injury they're claiming, um, that it promotes an increase in weight bearing immediately after the injury, uh, that it helps promote rehabilitation of the large muscles, uh, that it stays in place much better than these big leg bandages such as this Robert Jones bandage that we would put on in veterinary practice itself. And it's the only brace with a patented tension rod technology. The problem with it is that it can only order through a veterinarian, so they actually claim they want the ideal measurement of your veterinarian to take a lateral x-ray of your dog's leg, measuring the bisection of the tibia this way. And then from there, they can get the actual exact brace fitting for how it will be best suited for your dog. And they're very specific as to terms of if you're going to do specific measurements to how to get the exact brace for the exact size for your dog. Um, looking at the different companies, one ortho dog is one where you as a pet owner can get without going through your veterinarian. Um, they do have a number of different testimonials of clients who have used their braces and have had success healing their dogs with ACL injuries. Um, whereas this company itself at woundwear.com they have sold far more braces or far more recognized in the veteran community uh, and clearly they're taking a more sort of scientific approach and, and just dealing with their professionals and themselves um, my sense is if you're going through your veterinarian and you're willing to go through the x-rays and the cost isn't your primary factor then i would look at woundwear.com if you're looking more as a, a pet owner and not wanting to go to your veterinarian uh, then no question, I will look at the orthodog at orthodog.com. Thank you for watching this edition of NRA Secrets. What I want you to do now is click that link. That link above, you can subscribe to my channel. And then when you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.